Welcome to another research review. I'm Dr. Jason Saunders with HBOT USA. Today we're going to talk about hyperbaric oxygen as it relates to Bell's palsy. So Bell's palsy is a neuropathy basically of the facial nerve. Uh, it's relatively common. It's actually one of the more common neuropathies that exist. And uh, we're not exactly sure always what the cause is. Uh, it varies. It may be a viral cause. It may be a trauma cause, or it could even be something like a growth, like a tumor pressing on the facial nerve. But I think historically it's primarily either caused by a trauma to the uh, facial nerve itself or to some sort of uh, viral infection. And so uh, the question becomes, uh, what is the effect of hyperbaric oxygen on these folks? Now, traditional therapies usually include steroids, a prednisone course. Uh, it may also include antiviral medication if we think it might be uh, viral related. And so we have a handful of studies and I'll post them in the links below, but we have a handful of studies to show what's the effect of traditional care on Bell's palsy and what's the effect of hyperbaric oxygen when used with Bell's palsy. The two studies I want to talk about because they looked at it a little bit differently. Uh, one was a study just looking at traditional care versus hyperbaric. And the other one looked at traditional care uh, alone or traditional care plus hyperbaric. So one was a contrast study, you know, the group either got steroids or hyperbaric and the other one, they got steroids and they, in the treatment group, they got steroids and hyperbaric. And so really what they were looking at was what's the effect does, does implementing hyperbaric therapy for these people improve their case, reduce their symptoms and shorten the course of uh, the Bell's palsy. In some circles, they'll talk about Bell's palsy just, you know, self uh, correcting over time, which is basically a, you know, a question mark in terms of what is that period of time that it will take. So uh, in both of these studies, again, so if Bell's palsy is a neuropathy, and I have a handful of uh, other videos on different types of neuropathy, it, to some extent, it really doesn't matter what the neuropathy is. If it was a disc herniation, if it's MS, if it's uh, CP, if it was a stroke or if it's Bell's palsy, the mechanisms that govern hyperbaric oxygen are all the same. And so when we start to improve the oxygenation of tissue, we start to get an improved healing response, particularly to the neurologic system. The neurologic system is very metabolically active. It requires a great deal of oxygen to function even under normal circumstances let alone in a healing capacity. So by upregulating the amount of oxygen that a person can get, we can upregulate the healing response. So just like with other neurologic or brain injuries, we have to improve blood flow. We have to rebuild the, uh, the microcirculation in the area. We need to reduce uh, inflammation in the, in the whole area so that we can actually improve delivery of nutrients so we can actually get that healing response. And then also, if we can release and mobilize stem cells, we can improve the speed to which uh, a person can heal. And so with the two studies that I'll link lower down, in both scenarios, uh, in, the, in the case where they were comparing prednisone to hyperbaric, the hyperbaric case uh, resolved, or cases, there were I think 80 people in that study, the hyperbaric cases seemed to resolve faster than the prednisone cases did. And then in the other study where they looked at traditional care alone versus traditional care plus hyperbaric, they saw the same thing. Once hyperbaric was instituted as part of the therapy, there was a, uh, a reduction in the length of time that the Bell's palsy lasted. And so in both of these instances, increasing oxygen for these people throughout both uh, courses of care in both studies showed that the length of Bell's palsy was reduced with the increase of uh, hyperbaric therapy. All right, take a look at the links below. And as always, please subscribe to our channel. And if you have specific topics that you wanna hear or you'd like me to review some research on, please let us know.